So ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure and privilege to be with you here each and every week with my colleagues, Dana Hunter and Gary Knapp. My name is Sharon Whiteman and we love partnering with Manatech, this great company. Big warm welcome to anybody that's new or, or watching this later down the track. We know that Saturday mornings are a busy, busy time for families in particular and not convenient for everyone. We're very privileged to have Ray Robbins today. Ray Robbins is a three-star platinum presidential and author. He's known as the road warrior. He's traveled worldwide to support, train, and inspire all he meets while ethically champion the Manatech brand. Ray is from Flower Mound, Texas, and has 30 plus years of experience in the sales profession. He has a Bachelor of Science in Biology and Chemistry and served in the military flying helicopters in Vietnam, where he earned the rank of major. Ray is an active member in his community, received the Chamber of Commerce Entrepreneur of the Year Award, and has a real heart for children, especially our Mission 5 Million. The North American Giving Spirit Award is named in his honor, which says it all. Ray co-published the book, Get a Grip, with his son, Kevin, which outlines both everything you need to know and why you should create a residual income in your lifetime. Not only has his family and his family's lives been blessed, He's been a witness to countless thousands of changed lives. As the founder of Manatech and former member of Manatech's board of directors, Ray is indeed positioned to be one of the highest supports to all of us as associates. He carries the heart of Manatech on his sleeve. He's passionate to help the worldwide associate base. And we're all going to be blessed by what we hear and learn from Ray today. Love to sit at your feet. Ray, thank you so very much. Sharon, I appreciate that intro so much. You're so comprehensive, of course, that's your nature. And for those of the, you that do not know, this is the longest continuously running call that serves associates anywhere in the world. We're a th almost a 30 year old company. And I think Sharon has been doing this call for 25 plus years. <laughs> almost, no, not quite, Ray, but yeah. It's been a long time and we love it. And we, we're equally as blessed. There's nobody you. as long. There's some others that have been doing it continually for a long time, but I can't think of anyone that's been doing it longer than you. You were very dependable and very much appreciated. I, I was invited to be on the call recently and I could not. And I know that Chris came on and I know that Chris shined. He always does. That guy loves you guys so much. It's incredible. And he's so informative and so witty. I, I love the fact that he was involved with you. And I'm so glad that I'm here now. And I hope like everything that I can provide some information that makes your lives better, make your businesses better, make your families better, improve whatever you're doing better and what I'm going to talk about I think applies to every facet of our lives and it's something that I have been preaching for 40 some odd years now with network marketing and uh, I can't remember who started me on it I don't remember ever reading a book on it there may be but uh, I think that the three letter word why w-h-y is one of the most important things that you need to have down solid in order to be successful, not just in this business, not just in Manatech, but in everything, in your marriage, in your spiritual life, in your relationship with your kids, in anything that happens in your life, you need to spend some time really contemplating the why. Why are you doing it? Why is your involvement something that is important or not? Why is it something you should concentrate on or not? Why is it something you should develop passion for, really love for, really get your boat floated, if you will? I, I frequently ask people, what makes your boat float? And what I mean by that is what is your why? What is important to you? And, and I, I like to ask people, what are the three most important things to you? And I can tell so much by how long it takes them to answer that. If it takes them a long time, they have not spent time in deep thought about what makes them tick, what's important to them, what keeps their boat on an even keel. And in this business, I think 
your first why is why are you doing this? Why do you want to make more money? Why are you going to devote hours, time, energy, education to this endeavor? And, and I think you need to spend some real time on it. I'm going to give you some ideas. I'm going to tell you my whys, but they're not necessarily your whys. You have to determine what is your why. I can tell you that there are some whys that are evolving right now. There are many people that want to get involved in some kind of an extra income now that didn't think about an extra income at all three or four months ago. But all right, I'm just going to pop off. I'm just going to pop off camera, but I'll be right here. Okay. I'll okay, come back ahead. on. Inflation is so big worldwide. Everything is costing us more. The, uh, the average expense to the average family in the United States right now is something like $5,000 more per year than what it was last year. And I think they're underestimating it at that. I know that my expenses are a whole lot greater than $5,000 per year. And I know that everyone on this call right now and everyone that you interface with, everyone that you're talking to, anyone that you have a conversation with is dealing with inflation. They're particularly dealing with it at the pump. You go to put fuel in your automobile and, and you gasp sometimes it's such a big difference and then the cost of everything else that has to be transported is incredibly greater i think that many people that would would not look at a business opportunity a year ago would be responsive to you if you just simply said are you interested in making extra income I don't know what the numbers are in Australia, but I know that in the US, 53 million people are involved in some kind of a gig uh, effort, something like Uber. They're, they're working part-time because their full-time gig is not covering their financial needs. Well, the, that number of people is going to grow substantially. So many, many people's why will be in order to just make it through inflation. What I've been saying to people is, how would you like to beat this inflation? Do you think that we're going into a recession? I think that we will officially worldwide be in a worldwide recession before the end of July. I think that they will identify us as being, I mean, in a recession. So I'm saying, how would you like to beat the upcoming recession? We are going to be in a recession if we're not already now. We're already involved in extensive inflation. I have found a way to beat it, and I can show you how to beat it. And if, if the income that we're spending extra with inflation is about $5,000 per year, then that works out to about $600 US per year. So I think I can show people how to make an extra $600 a year with my business pretty readily. So a why for many people will be to beat inflation, to beat the recession. Let me give you another why that I had when I first got involved in network marketing. I was doing okay, but I had debt. I had a pretty significant mortgage on my home. I had a pretty significant debt on two cars. I had pretty significant debt that I was carrying on a regular basis on four credit cards. Now we were making it. We were doing okay. We were able to have some of the free time that we wanted and go on the vacations that we wanted and keep up with the payments that we had. But I could not believe how far in debt we were. So I wanted something on the side. When I got involved with network marketing, I was working for a Fortune 500 company. I had a pretty good income, but I still had a pretty significant debt. And so I got into network marketing initially, and it was my why. It was my exclusive why in the beginning. I wanted to get rid of the debt. I wanted to be debt-free. And I can tell you that today I am in debt-free. This home has absolutely no mortgage on it. I paid it off many, many years ago. I have a couple of cars that have no debt on it. My credit cards are completely paid for every month, whatever. I have no debt, zero debt of any kind. 
And because I have no debt, when I see a need, I can meet it. Someone at the beginning of this call talked about the Giving Spirit Award that I got a number of years ago. That's because I like to help people. I like to help needs. Well, the only way you can do that is to have the funds to do it with. And you don't have the funds to do things with if you're worried about your credit card debt and the interest on that. So being debt-free is a biggie. When you're talking to people about being in business for themselves, I think it's a real good idea to bring up your goal or their possible goal of being debt-free. I, I like to be in business for myself. I like to make money because it gives you time freedom. Uh, my wife, two days ago, decided that she has not seen her family in Louisiana for quite some time. Both of her parents have passed away. She has a whole bunch of aunts and uncles and cousins that love her dearly. And we went there on a pretty regular basis when one of her parents was alive. But we haven't been doing that now. And the pandemic has kept us away. So she just out of the blue said, you know, I have not seen any of my relatives in Louisiana for a long time. And I said, well, let's go. Let's go next week. We looked at our calendar. We shifted a couple of things around. There's a couple of Zooms that I'm going to do, but I can do away from here. But there's a couple of obligations that I will meet, but I can do it while I'm driving to Louisiana or while I'm there. So I've got the time freedom. That's a base reason why I want to be in this business for myself. The last one that I put on here is to create your vision. I don't know what your vision is for life, but if you don't have one, you need to develop one. Get a, a, a notebook that's titled vision and just put what would I like to see in my life five years from now? What would I like to see in my life when I pass away? You're not going to last forever. You're going to leave some kind of a legacy. You're going to leave some kind of memories for the people that love you. You're going to leave some kind of financial foundation. All up to you to what your vision is. My vision is that when I pass this place, when I leave, and I'm 76 years old now, and there's no male member of my mother's family that's lived to be 60. So I've already beat the odds by 16 years. I think a lot of that has to do with Manitech. But for whatever reason, I am outliving any other male member of my mother's side of the family that I know of. So I know I'm not going to live forever. Manitech is a great product, and it has made my life extraordinarily better. But it doesn't mean it's going to keep me from perishing. I will perish. I will pass. And when I pass, I've got a whole lot of what my vision is today. I want to know that my three kids belong to God. I want to know very deeply that my three kids and my seven grandkids and whoever else that I love so dearly will not have any kind of financial stress ever for the rest of their life. And I have worked to put that together. I've made sure that I've done it in a way where they will keep working. I don't want them to lose work that day, but I do want them to be in a position where God can make them whatever they were created to be without them having to worry about finances. So that's my big vision is the, the legacy that I'm going to leave for my family. Number two, why? The number two why is why you want to be in business for yourself. A lot of people do not want to be in business for themselves. They need structure. They need somebody else telling them what to do on a regular basis. They need to tell them that they have to be at their desk or wherever at 8.30 every morning. I have never wanted that. I did not want that when I was very, very young. I didn't want that when I was in school at any level. I did not want that when I graduated from college. I've never wanted that. But it's okay if you do. But I want to tell you that even if you do, you should have a business for yourself on the side. Everybody should for several reasons. The number one reason is tax advantages. If you do not have a business for yourself in any country in this world, you will pay more taxes than those of us that have businesses for ourselves. 
I'm using a computer right now that was paid for by my business. So I don't have to pay as much as other people. That computer that I'm looking at right now is a write-off for me. I have two cars sitting in a garage just behind this office that are paid for almost exclusively by my business because I can easily document the miles that I use for delivering something to somebody, picking up something for somebody, going to make a presentation to somebody. My business is so pervasive in my life that any kind of transportation I use is about 90% for some kind of business. How much does that save me? Cars have never costed me because I've been in business all of my life. They've never costed me what they cost other people. Mine are substantially less because of the tax advantages. Here's a, here's a pin that I got somewhere. You guys have got pins too. You see behind me, there's chairs and lamps and there's office decoration, there's staplers, there's a calculator I can see behind me, a light. All of those things are purchased by my business. I don't have to purchase many, many things because I can relate them to my business and so can you and so can everyone. Roughly, you will pay twice as much taxes if you don't have a business as if you do have a business. Now, I don't know what it's like in Australia, but in the US, you don't even have to make money with your business. You just have to prove that you have a business and that you're active in that business. Now, I don't think that that's a, a good way to operate anything. I think you should definitely make sure that your income from your business exceeds all of your expenses. It may take a while to develop that, but everyone should have a business. There's no one that can tell me they should not have a business for just that one reason, the tax advantages. If you have your own business, you control much of your time. The fact that I wanted to go to Louisiana next week was fantastic for me and my wife. We didn't have to ask anybody. I'm so old now that I have friends die almost every month. And I don't have to ask somebody if I can go to their funeral. I go to every funeral. I go to every memorial. I drop whatever else I'm doing. I change my schedule. I believe that I should show respect to the people that were in my life and were meaningful to me. And I love that I don't ever have to ask somebody. There was a time in my life when I worked for a Fortune 500 company and I'd have to beg just to go to a funeral. I have to beg for what time I was going to go on vacation. I had to beg for my raises. I had to make a big, big point in order to get a measly little 4% raise. If you're in business for yourself, you give yourself a raise every week. If you're active, you can, you can make your income pretty much what you want it to be if you're willing to work frequently and you're willing to work hard, especially in the beginning of building your business. I have worked for people that I had to, I had to really work on my psyche just to be cordial with them on a regular basis. I have worked for people, and you understand what I'm saying right now, that I've had to wonder how in the world did this person get in a position over me where they're telling me what to do? They're nowhere near as bright as I am. They don't work anywhere near as hard as I do. They don't have anywhere near as good ethics as I have. They will do things that are wrong and, and cover. I'm not like that. I want to choose who I work with. When I'm out soliciting other people to be involved with my business, I, I kind of do an evaluation of who that person is because I don't, I don't want to be in business with just anybody. I choose who I do business with. All of my workmates, all of my customers, all of my associates are someone that I've wanted to be around. I want to be around people that have initiative. I want to be around people that have ambition. People that are in business for themselves have ambition that is far and away beyond other people that don't have a business. So it is, it is such a good environment to be in business for yourself where you can choose who you're around and who you work with. The third why is why network marketing. If I'm going to be in business for myself, 
why should it be network marketing? <laughs> I can give you so many examples of this. Not too long ago, several years ago, I decided that I was going to assist a friend of mine to be in a restaurant. And I paid $45,000 just for the rights, for the franchise, for the state of Texas, for this particular restaurant. Then I ended up putting in a lot of money for the location, for the equipment, for the building. By the time we opened the door, I had already spent a million dollars on that conventional business. Any business you get into other than network marketing is expensive. If I open a dry cleaner, it's going to cost me a couple of hundred thousand dollars. In, in my particular case, I did it first class, so it cost me a million dollars. My ROI, my rate of return was so much less than what it is for network marketing. In our business, it costs next to nothing to be involved. Now, you end up buying things like the computer and like equipment. And, and you end up with your cars being an expense for your business. And the expenses do grow, but they grow as the people that are purchasing product in your organization increase. So your income is increasing also as your expenses do. But the startup costs in network marketing are much of nothing. It, it's a song. It's not so with other businesses. The biggest cost in most businesses is the location, the lease or the rent or the purchase or the mortgage. You can do this business from your home. How important has that become when we've been locked down like we have? Many, many people have been sent home. Well, that didn't have a big effect on network marketers. Network marketers were already doing their business from home. So low startup costs and being able to do your business from home is a big why. Now, this, when I'm talking about these whys, I'm not just talking about your mentality towards the whys for these. It's the whys that you're representing to other people that you would like to have be involved with you and your network marketing endeavor. There is no fairer business anywhere in the world than network marketing. In network marketing, you get paid for what you have done for what you have grown, for what you have personally developed, for the amount of time, and effort, and education that you put into it. You work for a company, and many, many people at that company are going to be overpaid, I promise you. Many of them there are going to be underpaid. Not so in network marketing. Network marketing is super fair. You get paid for your efforts. You get paid for the organization that you have built. It's very, very fair. The personal development in network marketing is extraordinary. The skill set that you develop in talking to people directly, the skill set that you develop in your passive efforts to talk to people. I have seen many people become very accomplished speakers, very accomplished representers, very accomplished con conversationalists because of this particular industry. This particular industry has always been interested in making each of us better people than what we were before. Regardless of how well we do with our business, they want us to be personally developed. Many, many books are suggested that make you a more successful person, a person that's uh, much more readily accepted by others. You become attractive to others because of the way you conduct yourself. It's so important this business to be an attractive person, to be an humble person, to be a working person, to be a, a person that gets things done. That's the kind of attitude that makes network marketers successful. So our personal development fits with just about any facet of our lives besides the fact that we're representing a worthwhile product. With network marketing, you develop an ongoing income. Just before this call started, I had someone that came by my gated community and could not get in because we're a gated community. And he asked for Ray Robbins. He wanted to come see Ray Robbins. And at the gate, they told him, we don't know Ray Robbins. That's because they've been taught to tell everybody that. 
We don't know the people that are behind these gates because we don't want people in that have not been approved to come in here. We give the names of people that we want to come into our community. So I called him and I said, I'm sorry, Tony, that they didn't let you in. It's part of their training to not let people in just because they say they know somebody that's in here. That, that smacks of not having a security. Anybody could figure out that I live in here and come in here and say, I'm going to see somebody that I know his name is such and such. And I said, but I'd be glad for you to come over, Tony. You just have to make an appointment for that. And he said, well, my business is really suffering and I want to get involved in network marketing with you. And he told me about what was going on in his business right now. And I said, we can make a, di a difference, Tony. So we're going to get together for lunch in the next few days. And I will show, so people start coming to me saying, I want to be involved with you. I, I already talked about you doing your own raises. I give myself a raise every week. I, I just told Tony that I'm going to get involved with him. I'll get Tony involved and, and that will increase my income. My income will be more next month because I got Tony involved. And I won't just get that individual involved. I will help Tony get five other people involved. I'll teach him how to help those five get five people each involved with or without his help. I'll show him how to develop an organization. Most business expenses are paid for by the company. Minitech pays all of your expenses for rent, lease, inventory, distribution, marketing. Uh, they, they make sure that all the product is paid for without you being involved with it. You don't have to worry about receivables. So it's very, very valuable to be involved in network marketing. Network marketing is fair. It pays the expenses. You have one true responsibility. You sell product. You sell product. You sell product to people that are not involved with buying the product. You sell more product to the people that are already buying product from you. You teach people how to be on the incentive trips, which improves their businesses, which improves business for you and business overall for the company. It's, it's a fantastic, network marketing is a fantastic endeavor. Uh, when I run into somebody that's negative about Manitech, about network marketing, I say, you just don't know how valuable network marketing is compared to any other businesses. And I start explaining some of the businesses that I have owned in the past. I've owned car washes. The expenses are ridiculous. Keeping employees there is ridiculous. I have owned daycare centers. Making sure that the liability is paid for, but for the possibility of hurting some child, it's ridiculous. The expenses are so ridiculous for that business. You know that I've had a restaurant before. Well, I've had other restaurants besides that. Uh, a couple of years ago, I supported 100% the guy that built my home because after 13 years in business, he was going out of business and he needed financial support. So I, I gave him a quarter of a million dollars to make sure that we put him back in business. And then I even found where he could buy properties, where we could build um, multiplexes. We built four plexes, five plexes, six plexes, all over downtown Dallas. <clears throat> that was a good business, but it had so many challenges of getting permits, of having people at their workplaces at the right time, coordinating the efforts of the different work crews at the different times. And the profit ratio was nowhere near as good as the profit ratio that I have with with Manitech. Manitech has 100 plus patents. In fact, I know at one time it was 117 and I know it's greater than that. So it's 117 plus patents. How many patents do other companies have that are in our space? I only know of one company out there that has four patents and we have over 117. What does that say about Manitech? Manitech is by far the most scientific company in our space. I believe that the, the nutritional supplement industry is one of the most fraudulent industries that walks the face of this planet. But, it, but it's because they don't have patents. They haven't proven efficacy. 
They haven't made sure that everything about all of their ingredients is appropriate. They haven't published any studies. They haven't made sure that they're providing a great product to their customers. There are so many nutritional supplement companies that are selling products that don't even have the ingredients in them that it says on their bottle. And they're not being checked. This company is scientific. We make sure that our products are valuable. We make sure our products really do work for people. We've spent over $50 million in research and development. I can tell you that there are many, many companies out there in our space that haven't spent $2 on research and development. Anytime they quote science, it's borrowed science. They borrow it from somebody else that did research and development. And it's usually on an ingredient that they put in their product. And usually the amount of the ingredient that they put in their product is nowhere near as much as was in the product that was in the science that they borrowed. The, the amount of research and development for our company is extraordinary. And I, I don't know of any other company that are selling nutritional supplements that have spent what we have. We have a scientific site. We have a site called nanotechscience.org. If you have people that are real concerned about the scientific part, have them get on manatechscience.org. I, what I like to start them on, if they're wanting to get into the, the deep science that is available, is the five separate university studies on cognitive capability, the capability to think better. I think just the studies that show that we have a product that improves your cognitive capability should be a big reason that everybody out there that you talk to should want to take our product. Why shouldn't everyone want to be able to think better. And we have five studies that show we make everybody think better. I'm so glad that I think better. I can't imagine where I would be at my age right now if I hadn't been taking a product for years that helped me think better. We're now in 33 countries. And it's not that we're just in 33 countries so you can have a business that, that is around the world. You also have a seamless compensation. Our computers got the capability to deal with all languages and all forms of compensation, all uh, kinds of monies. So you can sign up somebody there in Australia that, that is in Japan, and the company will make sure that that person is charged in their currency and paid in their currency. And that person can sign up somebody that's in Canada and that person can sign up somebody that's in Mexico who signs up somebody that's in Estonia, that signs up somebody that's in South Africa. It's all over our 33 countries with what's called a seamless compensation. Very few network marketing companies have a seamless compensation. What they have to go through, if they know somebody or somebody in their organization knows somebody in another country is ridiculous. It's a whole lot of effort that we don't have to. The fact that we're seamless and we're in 33 countries, it's very valuable for being involved with Manitech. We have a guarantee. It's at least six months in every country. You can get 100% of your money back if you don't think our product works for you. So it, it doesn't even have to be for that. It could be for the fact that they don't like you or whatever. They don't even have to have a reason. We will give them six months of whatever they purchase, we will give everything back to them. They only have to send us the empty containers. We don't want them to take our product and, and throw away the containers and the product did good for them and then them ask for our money back. We want those empty containers back. And the number of people that utilize that guarantee is so low. Why is it so low? Because so many people know the product worked for them. They liked the fact that they had that guarantee in the beginning because they felt like the product might not work for them. But then they find out during the course of that time that the products make a difference in their sleep habits. It makes a difference in their attitude. It makes a difference in their capability to deal with stress. It makes a difference in how friendly they are, how valuable they are in a conversation with people, how much they learn, how much better their mind works. 
that the, what was a foggy situation mentally previous to taking our product has cleared up. I, I have heard so many people in their first six months of using our product saying, you know, I just like the clearer thought. I, I just really like how much better I know that I'm thinking about things. We have a professional lab. We have a laboratory that many other kids in our part of the world beg to come work in because they're working on some kind of a project for the university that they go to. And we frequently have some kid working on a doctorate, working in our lab, because we have equipment that does not exist at their university. That lab is extremely capable of doing any kind of an analysis. Here, here's another point that I haven't be, even brought up. Sometimes people tell me about a certain product and I know it's just a me too product. There's no science behind it. We have got the capability that we can analyze any product out there that doesn't have a patent, patent and we could recreate it. We could sell the same product. There's no product out there that isn't patented that we couldn't also sell. The problem is we don't want to sell it because we want stuff that really works. We don't want to sell something that's just got a bunch of marketing hype behind it. We want something that really works. Here's, I have two more and then I'll open it up to you guys. We are the most compliant company. What does that mean that we are compliant? There are so many companies out there that are claiming things about their product that in some cases are really even true but it's against the law to say so. It's against the law to say a nutritional product heals, cures, mitigates, ameliorates any disease. It's against the law in most countries, unless you have a $100 million double-blind placebo-based crossover irrefutable study published in a major medical journal. Well, how many companies are out there saying that they have a product that works for everything? We used to do that too, and we got called on. So we don't now. We are compliant. Now, we frequently have people tell us that our product works for something, and we have to respond. We do not sell our product to heal, cure, mitigate any disease. That is so valuable that we are compliant. We are doing things in accordance with the law in all countries. The last thing that I've got listed for being involved with Manitech is every time you or anybody else consumes our product, they are providing better nutrition to children in orphanages all around the world. At our current date, we are given appropriate nutrition every day to over 100,000 children. Those 100,000 children, because of taking our product, we know we have reports from their caretakers. Within a matter of six weeks, those kids have improvements in their behavior. People behave better when they're getting appropriate nutrition. Within about six months, we have caretakers tell us that their children are learning better or more willing to learn are more attentive. And then after the end of a year of a new place taking our product, we ask them for statistics on how many people, how many kids the year before went to some kind of a sick bay, some kind of an infirmary on a daily basis and how much that has changed because of them taking our product for an extensive period of time. And in every case, the number of kids that have to report some kind of illness at the beginning of their day drops a lot. So we are making kids all over the world behave better, learn better, and have improved immune systems that keep them from being sick as much. That's pretty valuable. I know that many people are involved with Manitech for that one reason. They just love the fact that we are supporting so many kids in orphanages with better nutrition all over the world. I, uh, I'm glad that I covered that in, in the amount of time that I did, because I'm going to give a similar talk on a future Zoom soon, and I want to make sure that I leave room for people to ask any questions, so 
Sharon, I turn it back over to you. Awesome, right? You, your depth of experience and and posture with our great company is just something that everybody here I know will be modeling going forward. So we do have some questions um, in the chat. What maybe walk through us with us what you're going to do with Tony? What do you do in that first meeting for someone exploring a business? Well, it's going to be so easy with Tony because we, we have our work cut out for us. I don't want anybody to think that I think that it is easy to get people involved with a network marketing business or Manatech. As a rule, the, uh, the beginning thoughts of many people is pretty much on the negative side. They build up a wall in front of you. So I will tell you what I'll do with Tony, but I'll tell you what I do with most people that are not Tony. Tony came to me. He came seeking me out. Tony knows that I have been very successful in this business. I'm so successful that he can't even come into my gated community <laughs> without me approving it. And uh, Tony knows that I am honest, I'm forthright. I will lead him into a way that he can be successful with this, his, this, this business. So the first thing I will tell Tony is, I want you to educate yourself about our basic products. I want you to really know stuff about our Amber Toast, about our Plus, about our Omega-3, about our Infrazone. There's several products that I want him to have a very strong working knowledge. So I'll send him the scientific site. I'll send him to the videos that have been done, done by Dr. Nugent. And then I want him to ask me a bunch of questions. And I want him to do it pretty quickly. I said, if we're, we're going to make this thing happen and get you in a, a position where you're making enough money that you know that you can build a business with this, when I, when I give you an assignment, I don't want you to procrastinate. I want you to do it. And, and I, he will do everything immediately. That's so neat to have people like that. When you're talking to the average bear, you got to realize that when you do give them an assignment, you're going to have to prod them some. You're going to have to encourage them. In many cases, you're going to have to do it side by side with them to even get them to do it. So with, uh, with Tony, uh, I'm going to ask him, it's, Tony, where are you at financially? What do you have saved up right now? I want to know what kind of resources that you're going to have while we develop your business. I can have you making a supportive income within a year. Can you live a year on what you've got in reserves? So I'm going to find out how easy it's going to be on me or how much faster or what I'm going to have to do to, to make sure he's financially secure where he gets through that. Most people that come into this business get out of the business because they weren't able to build it fast enough. So one of the best things that you can have going for you if you introduce this to anybody is that they have enough financial resources that they can make it while they're building the business. Now, what are those financial resources for a high percentage of the people? They have a job. They are making a living. In many cases today, if they have a job, the job isn't paying them as much as they need to make it from month to month. So you need to help develop them, develop them an income to cover that difference. Let's say that because of inflation, they're already spending $500 a month more than what they're bringing in. Then one of the first things I do is show them how many, how much product we're going to need to sell to get to that $500 a month. And in order to get that amount of product in people's bodies, we need to have consumers. So I tell them the difference between consumers as customers and consumers who are also representing the product and what that means both ways. But uh, with Tony, it's, it's, it's gonna be super easy. With the average bear, the first thing I'm gonna have to go through is their reluctance to do network marketing. And this is people that probably have already admitted to me that they do need to make more money. They're willing to listen to me because they wanna make more money. And I said, well, if you drive an Uber, your average income is going to be somewhere around $500 a month. That's what the average is for the average Uber driver. 
Now, there's other things that you can do part-time, and I give them an idea what that income is. I said, now, how, when you get to the $500 a month, how are you going to take it to $1,000 a month? I don't know. I said, you're going to have to put in twice the hours. You're going to have to put in twice the time. That is not so of network marketing. In network marketing, you leverage. You, besides the fact that you are introducing our product to new people, you're also getting them, with or without your involvement, to introduce the product to their new people. So you're getting them to go through the same uh, source. Uh, today, around 3,500 people joined my downline. Did I go present this to 3,500 people today? No, I built a big organization. My organization's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You're always going to have people that drop out, but the more you add, the more they add, the more your organization has more people join your organization than drop out of your organization. I, I also have a big retention program. I see when people have dropped out and I call them, I keep up with people within five levels of me. And if they stop purchasing the product, I call and say, what happened? The product didn't stop working for you. What happened? Well, I can't afford to pay 150 bucks a month for your product. I said, so how are you gonna afford 150 bucks a month for anything by stopping something that was producing for you. How are you going to do? You are making some money. I, I know that you're making about $60 a month. So if you know that you're making $60 a month, don't you know that you could double whatever you did before and make it 120 a month and then keep it growing? So I show people that they should not drop out. That is not going to make their life better. They got involved with us because they needed better health. And they got involved with us because they needed better finances. So, and I, I tell people that in the beginning too, I, I'm very upfront with people. When I first talk with people, I tell them, I know that you're going to put up obstacles for me, but I can counter every objection. There is no objection that you have that I have not had put before me at least a thousand times before. There is no objection that you can tell me that I'm not going to be able to counter. And I'm going to get you to even agree that I successfully countered your objection. So I'm, I'm going to be able to counter all your objections. I, I just need you to get to a point where you're going to realize either you're going to make a good decision and work with me, or you're going to make a bad decision and leave yourself in a position where you still need to make more income, but you don't know how you're going to do that. And when you do do that, it's not going to be in the best vehicle that I have. My vehicle is the best. My vehicle will allow you to develop an ongoing income. My, it, my vehicle will allow you to reach a point where you can take a week off and your income is just as good as it was the week before. And, and it might even grow. You, you might find that you can take off two weeks and it's the third week. Your income is better than what it was when you left. Now, I don't want you to think that you should walk away from your business. I think one of the worst things a person can do is get to a point of comfort and stop working at all. And I think it's okay to cruise, but I don't think it's okay to quit. To me, it's like with an aircraft. You give it every bit of the fuel you've got to take off. When you get that aircraft to clear the runway, you do not pull the fuel back until you get to a certain altitude. When you get to that altitude, then you can back off some. Same thing with this business. You should really give it your all until you're at an income where you know that you can increase that income for the rest of your life by doing the same thing that you've already been doing. Then it's okay to cruise. It's not okay when you get to that cruise altitude in an aircraft to shut the power off, you're going to crash. <laughs> it's the same thing with network marketing. You cannot get to a successful income and think that you can quit working. You cannot. This business requires that you still have some effort. It doesn't have to be anywhere near what it once was, but you still especially have to be answering every question of everybody that approaches you in your organization. 
you have to still have some kind of a regular call to the people that are important in your organization or a regular email. Incidentally, don't make those emails too long or people won't read them. You, you have to have picking up the phone occasionally and just calling people and saying, hey, what, what's happening? I love you. I miss you. I just want to know what's going on with your family. You know, when was the last time you went on vacation? Where'd you go? You know, I want people to be in my life. I don't want them just to be in my business. I, I want, in fact, I offer myself as a counselor to anybody. I, I ask somebody, how are you doing? And if they tell me, well, I'm having some problems, I say, I want to know what they are. I might have some information that can help you, or I might be able to lead you to somebody else. And they said, well, it's a little bit personal. I said, I don't mind being personal. I think people that really love people are personal. So tell me what's bothering you. And I want to pray with you. I want to give you advice. I want to be a counselor. If, if I'm not educated enough to be a counselor for what you're talking about, I'm going to tell you. I'm not educated to tell you that. But I know somebody that is. And I'm going to be able to lead you to some other assistance. People that are close to me get closer to me. People that that I love, love me. And it's not because of anything other than I deserve it. And they deserve it. We, we work for each other. We do anything. I, I'm doing a Zoom call soon. And, and I'm going to be up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I found out that everybody on the Zoom would end up being up at a ridiculous hour. Except if I, I'm the presenter. And if I'll get up at... 2.30 in the morning and do that call at three in the morning for me, nobody else has to be this comfortable. There were a number of people that are going to be on that call that were amazed that I would be willing to get up at three o'clock in the morning. I frankly think that's my responsibility. It's not because I'm a better guy than other people. Why should 15, 20 people in some place have to get up at three when only one has to? And, and I, I want them to know that I'm in this business not just to help them be more successful in the business, I want them to know I care about them and I want them to care about me. So I'll get back to that original question. Sometimes my answers are too long, please forgive me. <laughs> I, think, I think to answer that simply, when I'm talking to new people, I want to get across to them that I am there for them. That, I tell you, the most important thing is, I'm not going to give you all the answers you need right now, no matter how long we talk, but I'm not going away. So you're always going to be able to get a hold of me. You're always going to be able to ask me the next thing that came to mind. Just know that I will help you fulfill your dreams if you stick with me. I will give you enough education to realize that my products are superior. If you'll just stick with me, I'll give you the same passion for my products that I have. If you just stick with me, I'll show you how you really make an income out of this and you develop a significant, valuable business. If you just stick with me. You do not have to have confidence right now. I've got all the confidence you and I both need. You do not have to have the, the skill set to be successful with representing this product. You can rely on me until you've gained that skill set. I will make sure I stick with you. So what I, what I should have said in answering that question a minute ago was what I just said then. But when you said it with Tony, and I, Tony already knows me. I don't have to get across to him that he can rely on me. He knows he can rely on me. I don't have to get across to him that I have a, enough confidence to cover for his shortages and my shortages and everybody else's. I, I can get us there. He, he just, he made a very good decision. He knows that I can help get him there. And now he'll, he will do that. And, and for uh, someone that you're approaching about the business that has it already said, yes, what, what parts would you change of what you just said? Well, what, what I do with <laughs> someone that I know has misgivings. I know that they have doubts. I know that they have reluctance. I tell them that I say, listen, there is no way that you being brand new to this could have anywhere near the confidence, the security of what I'm involved with, what I do when I've been doing it for 30 years. 
You, there's no way you can know. So you're not going to have the level of confidence I have. So what I need to get across to you right now is that my product is superior. I have over 117 patents. You don't know that. You don't know the patents that the other people have. There's a lot of things you don't know. What I have to get across to you is that I have the skill set and I have the confidence to take you to success, to take you to the knowledge you need. Now, I can tell you simple things right now, like we're nothing more than food. That's all we are. We're nutrition that is not in your diet. That's all we are. But we patented it. We did enough research on it that we could get a country to issue a patent on what it is, what the efficacy is, the capabilities. So that's, that's a small amount of information. I said, I'll tell you something that could help you. Now, if I can get across to you that you can rely on me, you can rely on my knowledge and my confidence, then we're home free. Success is in front of us. But something that you can do now, now this is in the US, you might have something like this in Australia. In fact, this app might even be available in Australia. There's an app in the US that's called Fujucate. F-O-O-D-U-C-A-T-E. It's a, a combination of the word food and educate. Food UK. You can get a free Food UK app on your phone and you can put it on the barcode of any food in any grocery store and it will tell you the truth about that food. So I, tell, I want you to put Food UK on the food you're buying, the food you're eating right now. I want you to put Food UK on there and you're going to find out you're eating garbage. You're, you're eating stuff that does not have the nutrition you need. I, I see that you don't think you have that in Australia. So it, it might not be a tool that you can use there, but you might could contact the Food UK people in the US and say, bring your app to our country too. You might even start something with that. And all just about everybody in Australia knows people in the US. Get some of the people that you know in the US to put Food UK on their app and get an experience with it. Just knowing their stories is gonna be important to you because some of the very same things that are on our shelves of our grocery stores here are in your grocery stores. So you can have the people that you know here, hey, take the Food UK app. I wanna see what it says on, and then name the brand, name the food, whatever that you're consuming and see what Food UK says about your food. In most cases, it's gonna say that it is not anywhere near as nutritional as you might want. It'll tell you why. It'll tell you that 60% uh, of this food is genetically modified. So these people do not believe that God knew what he was doing when he was making food. So they decided to make it in a laboratory. You know, much, much of our food is uh, genetically modified. And there is dynamic, ridiculous proof now that genetically modified food is not as good for you as food made by God. Well, God knew what he was doing when he was making food and we're trying to make it bigger, uh, in some cases more flavorful, in most cases resistant to wind, resistant to heat, resistant to cold, resistant to too much moisture, resistant to too little moisture. And in the process of doing all of those things, we make more money for the people that are in the agricultural business and we give more calories to people, but we are not improving their nutrition. We're depleting their nutrition. That's so, awesome, right? Is there another question? Yes. Well, just subtle um, distinctions. Um, if with that new person, would you, and if you're teaching a new person to present the business, do you recommend like a do you use a napkin or a little anything on paper, anything pre? Well, first of all, I tell people that if you do it without me for a while, you're going to fail. So don't do it without me. I, I want you to do it without me enough that I say, you can handle this better than I can. So you, I'll still be with you, but I want you to do all the presentations. I think a lot of people do not get involved with this business 
because you leave them on their own too soon. It's too easy to do presentations with people now when you've got Zoom capability, you, you've got three-way capabilities. This, it's too easy to let the experienced person make the presentation. The Bible says that you are frequently not a prophet in your own land. You can go outside of your territory and people will listen to you. If people are listening to me, when I'm talking to someone that does not know me, they're going to listen to me better than their friend that's been in their life for 15 years. It's crazy, but it's true. People will listen to the person that is not is involved with them. They, they, they will consider me to be an expert and they'll consider their friend to be a novice and, and they'll chew the novice up. They'll have objections that the novice cannot handle. So I, I just don't believe in leaving people on their own until they have their own level of confidence. And I have witnessed that. Now, it might be more work for me when I'm getting somebody started, but, but here's my philosophy about that. I don't think that you ever need to sell more than five people yourself. Now, I have. I've sold it to a whole lot more than five. But I tell new people that, too. I say, you don't have to sell this to the world. You need to sell it to five people. And I will help you. I'll be right there with you for those five people. And I'll get you to a certain level of confidence with those five people. Then it's your responsibility to get five people for each of those people. So you take it to the next level. And then you get them to take it to the next level. You, you, you have more leads than you can ever deal with if you just use your own downline. If, if you have five people, and any of those five people don't have five people, you contact them and say, hey, let's go represent, you know this product works. Let's you and I go represent this product to somebody that you care about. I make sure that everybody I introduce this to is successful introducing this to five other people. I do it with them and I make sure that they have those five people. And then I keep the, the process going. It's everybody's responsibility to have five people everybody there's no sense in bringing somebody into this business and having them pay for our product for the rest of their life that is not necessary you tell people hey if you just want to be a customer that's okay with me but i sure would like you to get it for free so let's let's make sure that you get five people that you care about introduced. in fact i don't think you should take this stuff if you don't believe in it well enough that you want five people that you care about to have better health also so my philosophy is everybody gets five, but that's all you ever have to get the rest of your life. If you make sure you retain those people, you get five, who get five, five levels deep, you're making a significant income. If you get it 10 levels deep, you're making a six figure income. You're making over a hundred US dollars per year. That's what I do. That's what I've done. I've done it with five different companies. With five different companies, I've gone to a significant income. So I know I can do it with anybody by, by the numbers. Math always works. If you, if you get five people and one of those is your mother, you need to get a sixth because your mother's <laughs> not going to sell anybody. So you, you get five people who will get five people and who will work with you and have the work ethic to do that. And then you want to teach those people, you've got to keep this intact. You have to have retention. You have to have continued development. You can continue making presentations to people as far down your organization as you want to. But you want to, at the same time, to be ultimately weaning them off. There's also a time that you wean people off. I, I, I've had people that wanted me to make all of their sales for the rest of their life. And I said, you know, I'm, I've already represented this successfully to 38 people for you. And you've got a pretty good organization. And, and I've heard you doing it. You're, you're good at this. Why don't you want to do it without me? You should want to have me out of the picture. You don't want to be dependent upon me for the rest of your life. 
and that. So some you'd be surprised. I could tell you some of the very successful people in Manitou right now that I had to wean because they wanted me to be with them for everything they did for the rest of their life. Well, ultimately, you understand that people have the capability and have the confidence and and you need to force yourself to get out of their way. Let them do it themselves. Okay, two subtle questions left. Um, do you do have a prepared presentation or do you just speak to people? Yes, I, ha I have a prepared presentation, but I often find myself leaving the prepared presentation. I think everybody should have a prepared presentation, but everybody should be willing to leave that prepared presentation as they read their, their uh, client. You know, if, if they start, I, I talk about product first. I, I talk about the science. I talk about you. I, I tell people you are not getting appropriate nutrition. And consequently, you're not going to have the quality of life that you could have. I could give you a higher quality of life. I could give you better health, but I can't give it to you if you're going to be objectionable. If you're if you're going to disbelieve somebody that's been doing it for 30 years, then then I'm up against the wall. And uh, and I, I really couldn't care less if people tell me yes or no. I just want them to tell me one thing or another. And if you're not interested in better health, so I usually lead with something like that. But occasionally, you know that that kind of a presentation to somebody is offensive to them. And, and you're not going to be creative with, with some of my contacts. I know that works with some. I know that I need to back away from that very quickly. You cannot say anything to them negative. They've gone through such a protected life that nobody has ever said anything to them that was harsh. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're wussies. And, and I think an awful lot of us that, are, that say no, we just say no because we're such cowards to, to not do some research on our own and figure out what's right or wrong. I, I love to tell people everything that I say is true. In fact, I have to be true nowadays because of Google. Anything I say, you can Google <laughs> and you can find out if I'm telling the truth or not. I'm not going to lie to you, and, uh, and, and, but I want you to do that Google. I want you to do the research. If I tell you something, I want you to try to prove me wrong. And, uh, and then I want you to prove me wrong with the product. I want you to take the product for six months. And I'm going to tell you the things that are going to happen with you. You're going to be able to handle stress better. You're going to be more honest with people. You're going to be more comprehensive with people. You're going to be listening to people better than you did before. You're not going to be interrupting them like you did before. They say, oh, I don't do that. So oh, you've interrupted me three times in the last five minutes. You're an interrupter. You don't even know you're an interrupter. And uh, Sometimes that shocks people and they realize that I just identified something about them that they need to know. And, uh, and sometimes that's good. They come along with you and sometimes it's not. They build a, a wall. But, but you just you have to be able to roll with the flow. That's the reason why it's good to use experience. Mm. Awesome. Let, let's, say, let's say, Sharon, as long as you've been doing this and how educated you are with doing this, you run into somebody that is the number three earner with a big network marketing company, but that person is willing to listen to you. You might want to get somebody like me on with you because that person could be so valuable. Uh, on the conference call that I'm going to do this why for, on I think it's the morning of the 25th, I will have the number one performer for another company in another country that wants to do Manitech on that call. There'll probably be 150 people on the call. I will be speaking primarily to that one person. I want that one person. If that person is interested in doing Manitech, and they're already a seven-figure income earner with another company, I want to give them the wherewithal. I and mean, I want to establish a personal relationship with them. And I, I want to help that person get into this for the sake of the, and, and I'm not doing it for me. That, that person is 40 levels away from me in the business. 
what that person does with the business won't be very significant to my income. It'll be significant to the company. And that's yes. important to me. It'll be significant to a handful of people that are above that person that I love. So uh, that's awesome. And another question in regards to everybody wants to be on this call, just so you know, <laughs> they're going to want to eavesdrop and see how you do it. Um, another question is in regards to the progress of medical science. So it's quite complex. And um, Kim is a, an absolute wellness warrior in regards to our technology, but has been facing, you know, the blocks of Western medicine and integrating it into her loved son's life. So making it more broad than that, um, how do you see a future where we'll progress, you know, the suppression of glycoscience in, in integrating it with a modern mainstream approach to good health? You know, I, I know that some people are running into roadblocks with the allopathic medical world. I am not. I, I'm, I'm finding so many health professionals of all disciplines that are opening up to things that are outside of their normal educational stuff. So I, I know that there was a time that I did run into that, but I'm not running into that now. I mean, it's, mm. I was at a medical school three weeks ago and I interfaced with so many of the professors at that medical school and they are so pro integrative medicine. They're so mm -hmm. ready for other things. Now, if you, if you run into somebody that is not, I like to use examples like, do you know that vitamin C is effective with a particular ailment and nothing else is? Do you know that? And they say, oh yeah, absolutely. That was discovered by the, the Limeys, the English, hundreds of years ago. And, and they know that vitamin C will completely reverse that difficulty. And I said, so is there a double blind placebo based study that says that? There is not. There is no double blind placebo based study that says that vitamin C is as valuable as it is. It doesn't exist. Who's going to pay that $100 million for that? It was already determined a long time ago. I said, I, I asked them, I said, is there anything else nutritionally that you know is very valuable for human health? You know that your mother told you about stuff. Did, did you ever use aloe vera when you were growing up? Did your mom ever cut an aloe vera plant and put it on a burn cut scrape abrasion or a steam of yours? Sometimes they've had that experience. Sometimes they have not. If they have not, I said, you need to get that. You need to get that. <laughs> it's real easy to go buy an aloe vera plant. As soon as you have a burn, cut, scraper, abrasion, you cut a leaf and put it on there, and you're going to be more amazed than most of the things that you ever learned in medical school. So I've got examples that I can use with those people that are a little bit reluctant. Uh, years and years ago, our medical community said something like nutritional supplements do nothing more than make your urine more expensive because you're wee wee in a mouth. That's what they used to say. Mm. I don't say that anymore. The American Medical Association about 10 years ago now validated nutritional supplements and said that it is pertinent for you to understand that you cannot get all the nutrition you need from your food any longer. You must supplement. The American Medical Association said that. They didn't say which supplements you should get. And unfortunately, when you supplement, you might get some that don't benefit you. You might get one that does. I, I like to tell doctors about antioxidants. Every doctor knows that oxygen-free radicals inside of the human body are very detrimental. They cause all kinds of health challenges. The number one sold nutritional supplement in the world are antioxidants. That's the number one, not vitamins and minerals, not uh, the number one is antioxidants. And it's because the medical community has been recommending strongly antioxidants for years. I'd say, you're a doctor, you know every doctor recommends antioxidants because you know that oxygen-free radicals are so damaging to the human body. 
Yeah, I'll tell you something you don't know. The only antioxidants, I mean, only oxygen-free radicals that do extensive harm to the human body are the ones that are fat soluble. Oh, I didn't know that. He said, yeah, that's the only ones that breach the cell wall barrier and cause all the damage. All the ones that are tested, every antioxidant sold in this world are only tested for the water soluble oxygen free radical. So then they even testing for the ones that cause the most damage. Our company has developed an antioxidant that works on fat soluble and water soluble oxygen free radicals. You show me another company that's got an antioxidant that does that. They don't. None of them do. None of them have ever tested for oil soluble oxygen free radicals. The, the ORAP machine, the machine that is test, test for antioxidant capability, oxygen radical acceptance capacity, only test for water soluble oxygen free radicals. It doesn't have the capability to test for fat soluble. So none of the scientific community worldwide is recommending our AO unless I tell them you're recommending the wrong AO. We're the only one that takes care of fat soluble as well. Get on our science side and see that. Get on our science side and see that we have proved that a couple of our antioxidant pills is more valuable than consuming 11 servings of vegetables a day. And who consumes a lot, consumes 11 servings of vegetable today anyway. Mm. So I can, I can convert any doctor in a heartbeat by just going over some of the key factors. I, I tell you something else I love. I hope this answers your question. I hope mm. this gets to the root of what you're talking about. You know, for many, many years, we didn't know about bacteria. It was discovered long before Louis Pasteur discovered bacteria and told us what it was. It was discovered that the babies delivered by midwives did not have infant death syndrome. But the doctors that delivered the baby did have babies that had infant death syndrome. Many babies died that were delivered by medical doctors. Very few died that were delivered by midwives. The only reason is for the midwives were washing their hands all the time. No doctors washed their hands. Prior to that, no doctors wore gloves prior to that. They, they could do an a, a autopsy on somebody that had a horrible disease and go right in and put their hands inside of a woman delivering a baby. And they just transmitted that horrible bacterial disease situation from that autopsy to that baby. The guy that discovered that, the medical doctor that realized that and tried to tell the medical community we need to wash our hands. We need to wash our hands. We need to wash. He was kicked out of the medical profession and he died in an insane asylum. He went insane because he could not convince medical doctors that they needed to wash their hands. Now, all I have to do is tell that to a medical doctor and say, prove me wrong. You guys are not always right. In, in your country, a doctor discovered what caused ulcers in Australia. A doctor discovered what caused ulcers and it was a bacteria and nobody believed that guy. Yeah. The difficulty he went through for 15 years to prove to the medical community that he had discovered what caused ulcers, the guy almost went crazy just trying to get it across. I believe that the medical profession has the capability to be more closed-minded than other professions. And I tell them that. I said, you guys are closed-minded and I can prove it to you. All I've got to do is tell you a couple of stories about your history. It, it took a guy going insane to finally convince you guys you needed to wash your hands. Yeah. It took 15 years to convince you you needed to wash your hands. He didn't know what bacteria was. None of you guys knew what bacteria was until Louis Pasteur came along. So you just refused to wash your hands. In fact, there was a doctor that was part of kicking him out of one particular hospital that said, if you leave that guy there, he'll be making every doctor there wash their hands after everything they do. That was his reason for getting somebody kicked out of a hospital. And the people that he presented it to at that hospital that fired him said, ooh, that would be a horrible thing to have to wash our hands every time we did something. So they fired him. 
That's how revolutions happen, isn't it? Change. Ray, um, there is one more one question. I need, to, I need to say something because sure. I'm giving you a whole bunch of information that is unnecessary. I think it's okay for people to become highly educated about us and health and all of our products and everything. But I think that keeps a lot of people from being successful. I don't think you need to know everything to represent this product. You need to know basic facts that get people to realize they are not consuming proper nutrition. You have proper nutrition. So I don't want you guys to think that you have to be super aware of everything. You don't have to be a Dr. Nugent to be successful with this. You do not have to be dynamic. Dr. Nugent is dynamically educated. He is. I love how educated he is. I frankly don't want to know as much as Dr. Nugent knows. And I'm very successful in this business without knowing everything that Dr. Nugent knows. So I, I want all of you to know, you do not have to know everything to be successful. I tell people about salvation all the time. I don't know everything in the Bible and I never will but I'm still going to have enough that I can tell people what I believe about the Bible and what I believe about salvation. But I'm not going to hesitate to tell people just because I don't know it all yet. So don't think you have to know it all before you successfully represent Manitou. These whys are what's important. You know your four whys real well. You don't pick out necessarily the ones I mentioned. You pick out what yours are. Why do you want to be successful in this business? Why do you want to do network marketing? Why do you want it to be manicap? Why do you want to be in business for yourself? And then you develop the whys of the other people you're talking to. It's not as much knowing your whys as it is getting all the people in your organization to develop strongly what their whys are. Awesome, Ray. That's perfect. Um, it's very um, heartfelt, everything you've said. Is there anything you'd like to leave people in your heart with today? Well, I, I read an article recently about us being the 54th most successful network marketing company in the world. And the person that was relating this to me was so excited that we're number 54. Well, that's good, but I really want us to be in the top 10 in my lifetime. We are such a good product. We have such good managers. We have such good science. We have such a good seamless compensation plan. So it just came to my mind when you asked to say something that was really heartfelt for me is that we are very underrated. Our company is so underrated. And I think the only thing that's going to get us to the proper rating is a level of passion among all of us that is so strong that we want our company to be in the top 10. We want everybody, we want the word Manitech to be a household word everywhere because of how valuable we are to people. So, well, that, people are that, definitely, they're praying for what we have, aren't they, Ray? Yeah. In fact, there's so many pr people praying for better health right now, better finances, a better purpose in their life. We have that for them. We can give them all three of those. Mm. Awesome. We Thank have you. you know, I, I appreciate you saying that too. I love to tell people that when you're presenting to a brand new person, that some way or another, you tell them, I have come here bearing gifts. I am here to give you a big change in your life in several different ways. So understand that when you buy this product, yes, I'm going to make a commission off of that. Mm -hmm. But what you need to know is that I come bearing gifts. I am giving you a much more valuable life. If you'll just keep listening to me, keep sticking with me, I come bearing gifts. Right, people on this call will be partnering with you. And there's several committees that you're going to be joining them on their every morning walk. So they'll be repeating this and getting it deeper and deeper. So God bless you. Thank you so very much you. for.
God bless all of you. I appreciate you being involved. We love you, Bye. Ray. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Have a great weekend.